What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of ice age. This is really really interesting for me. I love this set uh, Sitting at the top of the value train here. We've got altar of bone at $15 uh, Illusion of grandeur is sitting right at 12 and then probably the card most people know from this set necropotence is sitting at 7 uh, so there's not an amazing potential for value but there is some decent value i will not necessarily know what the rare is so i do apologize if i miss it uh, but as always we are going to go through every card and talk about this as if this is a pack one pick one scenario uh, so we're actually going to determine what our draft pick would be uh, if we were drafting this set i will say obviously i do not know this set super well uh, and so if I get anything wrong, I do apologize. If I pick a card that you feel like is just stupid to pick, then roast me in the comments. Go for it, guys. But um, we will do our best. So our first card here is Phantasmal Mount. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has flying. Uh, you can tap it and target creature you control, which has toughness less than 3, gains flying, and gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Other effects may later be used to increase that creature's toughness beyond three. If Phantasmal Mount leaves the battle battlefield uh, before end of turn, bury the creature. If that creature leaves play before the end of the turn, bury uh, Phantasmal Mount. This is an interesting card. Uh, I love the wording, by the way, on these old sets. Uh, I don't... I mean, it's a 1-1 flyer for two that uh, can buff other stuff, so I guess it's not bad. Uh, we'll, we'll put it over here for now. I really don't know for sure. Uh... Ashen Ghoul is a 3-1 for 4. Uh, it, can, it can attack the turn it comes into play, so it basically has haste. Uh, you can pay 1 black and return it to play under your control. Use this ability only at the end of your upkeep, and only if it is in your graveyard with at least 3 other creatures above it. Very specific. <laughs> um, but I actually like this card. It's Recursion. Uh, it's a 3-1 for 4, which isn't amazing, honestly. It's pretty bad, but this is an older set, so... Uh, it's not too surprising. It can attack as soon as it comes into play. The haste actually helps. Uh, and the fact that you recur it every once in a while is fantastic. So I do actually kind of like that card. Uh, Sunstone. Pay two and sacrifice a snow-covered land to have all creatures deal no damage in combat this turn. Uh, this is just a repeatable fog effect. Uh, the art is beautiful, but I don't think this is good by any means. Uh, Illusions of Grandeur. There we go. This is our rare. Uh, so three and a blue for an enchantment. It has a cumulative upkeep cost of two. Uh, when it comes into play, gain 20 life. Uh, when it leaves play, lose 20 life. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. Uh, I don't know if this is good, actually, in Limited. I have no clue. Uh, I feel like gaining 20 life is great, and it probably won't leave the battlefield, so I imagine it's good. Uh, I'll stick it over here. I, I mean, I don't know for sure. Correct me in the comments, obviously, but I feel like that's actually not bad. Pay for and just gain. Well, it does cum cumulative upkeep. That's a lot, but it is going to be late game. Uh, Legions of Limb Duel is a 2 3 for 3, and it has Snow Covered Swamp Walk. Uh, if you don't know what Swamp Walk is or any land walking ability, uh, basically it says if the opponent controls whatever land, in this case a snow covered swamp, uh, this card can't be blocked by that opponent. And so, uh, basically, snow-covered lands were a big thing in this set. If your opponent happened to have one, uh, then that means, er, excuse me, a swamp, uh, a snow-covered swamp, then that means basically they just can't block this creature. Uh, I don't think this is amazing. It's probably okay filler, but generally not that great. Uh, Mind Ravel, two and a black for a sorcery. Target player chooses and discards a card from his or her hand. Ignore this ability if that player has no cards in hand. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Uh, this doesn't seem amazing to me. It's basically a Mind Rot, but instead of them discarding two cards, they discard one and then you draw a card. Uh, it's not bad, I'm sure. Again, I feel like it's probably okay filler. Uh, Shambling Strider is a 5-5 five, five, for 6, uh, and you can pay 1 red and 1 green to give it plus 1, pl minus 1, excuse me, until end of turn. Uh, this actually seems like a decent finisher. Uh, again, the creatures generally were a little bit more underpowered in this age of magic, um, and so a 5-5 five, five for 6 is fine, uh, and the fact that you can buff it is actually good. The only thing I don't like, uh, especially in first picking this, would be that uh, it does have red and green to actually buff it. So you're kind of putting yourself in two colors. I feel like you don't necessarily have to use it for the two colors, but uh, it's definitely a powerful card. I'm going to keep it here for now. Uh, Armor of Faith 
is one white for an enchant creature. Target creature gets plus one, plus one. You can pay one white and creature uh, armor of faith enchants gets plus one, plus zero, plus one, excuse me, until end of turn. Uh, you can technically pay that as many times as you'd like. This suffers from the same thing. I always talk about it. Enchant creatures, it sets yourself up for a two for one. I also don't like that it buffs. Uh, it, it, it gives you a general buff, obviously, but I don't like that it buffs the toughness. Uh, yes, it will help your creature stick around, but it will not make it stronger. Uh, and that's kind of a hit against it. Hey, there we go. Brainstorm. Uh, one blue for an instant. Draw three cards, then take two cards from your hand and put them on top of your library in any order. Uh, this is one of the most well-known cantrips in the game. Uh, the great thing about Brainstorm is when it is teamed with shuffle effects of any kind, but uh, obviously the most well-known would be fetch lands. Uh, and the reason being, you can actually ditch a couple cards that you either don't need or that are just not forwarding your game plan uh, at that time and shuffle them away with a fetch land. Uh, you can also hide cards underneath if your opponent is uh, basically thought seizing or doing something like that. Uh, then you're able to brainstorm, hide a couple good cards under there that then they cannot take, and then you draw them back next turn. Uh, this is a great card. I don't think it's going to be amazing uh, in a limited environment, but again, I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, I definitely wouldn't first pick it, though. Uh, Illusionary Wall is a 7-4 for 4 and a blue it has flying, first strike, and a cumulative upkeep cost of one blue. Uh, actually really dig this card, uh, funny enough. I mean, it's a wall, literally, uh, but it is a powerful card. So I, I feel like it's not proactive enough, but I'll keep it there for now. Uh, Stone Hands, enchant creature for three. Target creature gets plus zero, plus two, and you can pay one red creature. Uh, Stone Hands enchants gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So this is very similar to the white enchant creature, and it suffers from the same thing. It just it sets yourself up for a two for one. Uh, I don't like this very much either, so I will go ahead and skip it. Uh, Seizures is another enchant creature, one and a black. Whenever target creature becomes tapped, that creature's controller pays three, or Seizures deals three damage to him or her. Now this is the kind of enchant creature I actually really like because you can enchant your opponent's creature. Uh, and so for that reason, this could actually deal damage to them if they tap it. Uh, it's basically kind of a removal spell in a way because it, they are going to be incentivized not to tap it. Uh, but it can also deal three damage to them if they do. Uh, Woolly Mammoth, 3-2 three, for three. Uh, gains Trample as long as you control any snow-covered lands. Uh, this is fine, honestly. It's a good on-curve creature, so I do kind of like it. Uh, Earth Lore. Enchant land for one green. Uh, when Earth Lore comes into play, choose target land you control. Uh, pay zero, tap land Earth Lore enchants to give target blocking creature plus one, plus two until end of turn. Uh, I don't particularly like this card, to be honest. Uh, it just doesn't seem that good to me. Uh, cooperation is the last card. Target creature gains banding, enchanted creature for two and a white. This is obviously just as bad as any of the other enchant creatures. Uh, so here... I don't know what to pick, actually. I weirdly really like Illusions of Grandeur, but I think it's a little bit too pricey long-term with the cumulative upkeep. Uh, I think it might actually either be the Ashen Ghoul or the Shambling Stri Strider. Excuse me. Uh, this card, Seizures, is actually really good, too, though. Uh, I feel like that could be awesome. Illusionary Wall is fine, but again, the cumulative upkeep, and it's just not very proactive. Uh, so I think it's kind of between these three. I could see going any way, uh, but I think I would probably go with the Strider just because uh, it makes a good late game bomb and that's always a priority in my mind. So that would be my pick. Again, roast me in the comments if you feel like I am off base with that. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content that we have coming at you all the time. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.